Hi everyone, and welcome back to Family Simulator on the No Man's Land map. This is the Everything Challenge. It's kind of weird because last episode we finished everything. We made every production, we have every animal, and we have every crop in the ground. So I'm kind of a little bit of a loss of what to do. We're now into the process of just refining the, the uh, farm. Uh, this white material in this trailer here is actually fertilizer. I uh, went around and picked up all of the bags that were hanging around and uh, loaded them into here with the idea that it might be a little bit easier to refill this, the uh, fertilizer spreaders as they go around. Rather than jumping into fertilization first off, which we do have a lot to do, if we look at our farm, which is all of this, we can see that we do need to do a little bit like potatoes and a lot of them need their second application. We did use planters that have um, a fertilization effect for a lot of it. So that has covered a lot of it. What I thought we would do is some of the stuff that most people don't look at in the game and particularly the renewable energy stuff. So over here, last time we expanded our olive farm up here, up the hill, and we have a little bit of a gap and I don't think we're going to go much wider that way and I don't think we're going to pull the uh, poplar down too far. So. This area is up for grabs for maybe some solar stuff. Or we could just use some of this spare grassland that we have up north here, which we don't tend to uh, you know, use as grass. So let's have a look at the productions and see what there is. So basically we've done all the factories, we've done all the selling points, or we've got down selling points that we need. We've got all the greenhouses and we've got all the types of orchard. But yeah, we haven't got the generators. There's five to choose from, and each of them have a price per month. I'm not quite sure how it works. I think it's like maybe based on daylight hours. So uh, on summer months, you get a lot more and winter months, you get a lot less. I do know if you look at the XML files, you can see that there's like cloud and stuff like that. And particularly if you look at the calendar for the weather, uh, all these icons and, and the differences you get, uh, you can see expressed in the XML files. I get the feeling that only certain types of weather uh, produce energy those certain types of days. So you don't get it at night and you don't get it when, let's say, it's raining or something. But in general, I think we can just kind of trust these numbers to be the average across the month and across the year. So I've got a little spreadsheet here and I'll put the uh, numbers on the screen as well. If you go across all of these, it's they've all got different rates versus their cost. So go from left to right, the small solar collector at $7,800 at $648 a month means it takes 12.03 uh, months to pay off, which is, uh, by the way, the worst of all the next. Uh, if we go to the next price up, $11,400 for this wind generator, it pays out at $984 per month, which gives you a 11.58 months to pay off. Uh, the next one is this $93,000 one. This one is the best. It takes 10 months, 0.47 to pay off. So this is uh, the highest yield per dollar. And then we have 155 at 13,920, which is 11.1. And then the $750,000 one at 67680, which means it's 1108. So this guy, the solar panels, uh, pays off in 10 months or 10 and a half months, which means over its lifetime, it will make the most amount of money. And it is equivalent of about 12 of these cheap ones. So we could, uh, the price between these, if you, if you put down 12 of these, you would have spent roughly the same amount for this larger one, but you'll be making less money per month. So let's start with this $93,000 one. We've got 250,000. I think we should start with two. And we can build up our farm as time goes on. They're not too big. So, yeah, I think up here it wouldn't be too bad. I think, um, yeah, I think just about here. I do believe they swivel towards the sun. And so, uh, yeah, let's put this one here. And we'll do another one kind of next to it. So, uh, you can see how they've kind of got, got different... Uh, twists to them. So that's those. Um, you can get uh, some um, uh, mods in this area. 
And um, there is actually one that I really do like. So uh, let me quit the game and add it back in. Okay, back into the save game. As you can see, the panels have rotated and they're pointing towards the sun. See it kind of up there in the sky. Uh, it looks like it just misses the ground there. So a little uh, tip, maybe it's worth uh, putting it on a, on a surface that's a little bit flatter. Uh, so the mod that I've used in the past, it comes under the same area under generators and it's called the Celia Antenna and I'll put on the screen who makes it. It uh, is only $1,000 and makes $480 a month. And that means it pays it for itself in two months, 08. So just over two months. I think this looks just like an attractive thing. So it's a good way of making a little bit of money at the start. It's very cheap. And it just has a nice little trickle. But I just like the way it looks. I think it's a, it's not going to give you too much money. Uh, it's not too much of a cheat. Um, and it just I think it looks half decent. So I was thinking that kind of where our tree line is going to grow at the end of that over here. So you can see here we've got trees there and over there. It's going to place it over here. It will need, uh, it will make a bit of a, a flat area. So I'm aware of that. So let's, let's put it there. And we get a little bit of a brown hill and a bit of dirt. So let's run over there and have a look. It just looks good on the horizon, I think. Uh, I, I've used this a fair few times, just get that little bit of trickle of money. I don't think it detracts from the, 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 the Vista. And it isn't too OP, it's not giving you too much money per month. But uh, it, look, it looks quite good. Uh, I quite enjoy uh, this mod. I think I've got my flashlight on, yeah. Uh, you can see it does make a pad and so it has caused some terraforming. But yeah, it was just, it was just trickle in a little bit of money for us. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a fun addition to the game. So what needs to happen? We need to get that fertilizing done. Actually, this tree is prone for the killing. Uh, it kind of gets in the way. And so uh, let's get that cut down. We'll throw that away. We'll use the uh, Lama Jump mod to get rid of the stump. And that's that done. There's a whole pile of trees over here. So I'll just join the pile. I think it's... Yeah, it's over here where these bushes are. Oops, dropped it. So at some point, need to uh, worry about that. I can clean that one up as well. There's a whole pile of them. So uh, let's get some maintenance done. We'll get a fertilizer going, I think, first. But I do know, I think this, the silage, uh, so not the silage, the slurry in the cows is absolutely insane. So. I think that needs to be worked out. And we also need to plow this. Now, this is still April, the month where we put them down. So we'll probably do that in May. But I'm pretty sure the milk is over the top. And so the, all the numbers, let's have a look at via the menu instead. So yeah, milk is nearly about to overflow. We should do something about that. And slurry, uh, it was 60,000 and it's lower now because what I did is I brought over the uh, big truck and fill that up. So that's the first thing we can do is bring that back to home. This is now carrying 65,000. The pigs right in front of us also have 60,000 in them. So we may be getting to the point where the BGA actually can't take that much material, which is great because it gives us an opportunity to actually use the slurry uh, for the fields instead. So uh, let's run over to the BGA and get this unloaded. All right, that's uh, delivered. And what we need to do is pull it from that tank and pull it into this uh, little silver one. And then from the silver one, we can push it into the BGA. So we've done this lots of times before. So uh, I'll see you at the end of a jump cut. All right, that was the last load from the green thing pushed into the silver tanker. Now we just have to push it into the BGA. Need to work out maybe a pumps and hoses solution to this. Hopefully. Maybe there is some way of attaching a hose or something that would allow you to pull it out of the green thing. I assume that this green tanker is supported by uh, pumps and hoses. Uh, it'd be disappointing if it wasn't, because it's such a nice big container, 65,000 liters. Let's get over to the pigs and get our first load of slurry from them. 
This uh, wood mill here needs to be removed, so we need to pick up all those pallets and stuff and uh, move them around. It also looks like the sheep are getting very, very close to the limit across the board. Uh, so we have to do something about the wool. We're starting to get to the point where we have more material than our productions can handle. So we may actually have to start uh, selling some of the intermediary stuff. All right, let's get our first ever slurry from the pigs. Let's have a look at the pigs and see how much they've got before we start. The pigs have 79,000, so they might be a fantastic resource for slurry going forward. So let's look at, have a look at the uh, BGA to see if it can take this. So no, it's only going to take about another 40,000 at best. So it does look like uh, we will be producing more slurry than maybe the BGA can do. Oh, actually, saying that, we haven't uh, pulled it from the two places for a couple of months. So maybe, you know, if we get them offset from each other as one's building up, we deliver from the other one. But yeah, that's a lot of slurry. We've just moved 65,000 times two. So what's that, 130,000 liters? And, oh, that's heavy. And we still have... And uh, 17,000 plus another. Well, we still have nearly 60,000. Oh, that's we have about 180,000 slurry right now. Maybe we need to put down another BGA. That's another option. But as I said, we probably, if we pull it from one from the cows and then uh, the next month pull it from the pigs and then toggle between the two, it probably would work out. The BGA does absolutely pound through the slurry to make the methane. I think the uh, gold mine is happy. Where's our thing? Productions. Gold mine. Yeah, it has some stones, has some water, and it's now delivering that methane we just made. Gold mine has definitely done as well. I think if you're playing a map which doesn't have the gold mine, so, you know, not No Man's Land, the renewables might be a pretty good start of game solution because. Within a year, for all of them, you are going to just make this raw profit with no input. If you can really afford it, the iron mine is, uh, I think, the best because it's just free material. The question is, how fast does it come out? So let's uh, attach this. I will uh, do this as much as I can. And uh, then we can move on to something else. And that will be it. The uh, BJ is now full. Uh, yeah, 100,000 litres of slurry. So it will make 45,000 methanes and the gold mine will use only a barely a small amount of that. Talking of methane, not that we have the money for it, but how much does the methane tractor cost and how good is it? So first thing is, is there anything in the sales? Ooh, there's the this gal. Uh, baler. So, yeah, you pour the uh, raw material in the back, and then it's going to make uh, round bales coming forward, then dump them off somehow. It's kind of cool. I don't think we need that. A big heavy hauler. If we were hauling the metals, I, I could see us using it, this for that. Uh, 16,000 meters cubed isn't that much, but it is good for quite a good weight. Ooh, a nice big header for a. a uh, uh, for corn would be, I think we're going to get to this scale at some point, but I think we can skip that. But yeah, what what is the uh, the methane tractor cost? I don't know if it's under medium. So I've got it as a mod. Here it is. It is under small. So 180 horsepower, which is not nothing to be laughed at. And this takes uh, uh, methane as petrol. Um, we don't get a front hitch, but we do get a, uh, is that, I think that's a weight on the front. But yeah, it's not cheap though, $217,000. Uh, interesting looking vehicle. Once our uh, money gets a little bit higher, we'll, uh, I think we'll get that just for the fun of it. And then to uh, fill it up, I think we just come over here so we can just come over to our methane tank and this will be a fill point, much like you would normally for uh, gasoline. So let's find our, uh, I think we're going to need a, a tractor with narrow tires. 
This guy has the spreader on them already. Let's get this guy going out on a field. So which field needs uh, fertilizer first? So let's uh, have a quick look. Looks like our big field right here and also our cotton field. So let's go to the cotton field. Might do this as a little time lapse. Haven't done much fertilization. And yeah, just enjoy going up and down the field a bit. And uh, I'll see you in a minute or so after we get this guy all fertilized up. Keep thinking that I could have done something, but now I'm left with an empty heart. No making amends, no waking up beside you and holding you till we forget it all. That little triangle over there is very annoying. I am very tempted to just cut that corner of the field off just to make things a lot more simple. It makes harvesting harder. It makes fertilizing harder. This just makes everything harder. I think I might, uh, after this season, after this cotton has been pulled up, uh, rip that out. Saying that though, after this season, I probably will end this save game. I think I'm more interested in Starting again from scratch and going back to the early game where everything's a struggle. We'll definitely do about one year so that those renewables have had time to pay off and the horses and pigs have grown up and we can sell them. But uh, we might accelerate through the month a little bit more rather than doing all this manual stuff. So what else do we have to do? So let's uh, also do this big field. A little bit harder to see because the uh, the wheat, I think it is, has grown. We can check the map though to make sure that's happening. Get rid of the weed symbol. Yeah, that looks looking good. I'm just gonna go straight over this rock area and do nice long stripes. Hopefully it won't be too problematic. This spreader is amazingly wide and it doesn't take that much material. It's actually quite good. What I might do is tell that trailer to come over here which has all the fertilizer on it. All right, we'll do that as we reposition. I'm not worrying about wasting stuff too much. So this guy who has the trailer on it, actually let's just enter that. All right. Does it have the trailer still connected? It does. Let's run this over to the field. I'd rather get an AI to do it and fighting through here. Most likely it would have slammed into something if I used the AI there, so we can just drive this around. And uh, that should be fine. So, uh, yeah, let me get another time that's going. Enjoy another song. And I'll see you in another minute. Oh! No, I can't refill from a trailer. Even though that's what we have in there. So it's... Do I have to push it in? Do I have to have the engine started? Oh, that's an issue. So even though I can pick it up, I can't transfer it. 
Oh, that's problematic. I thought that would be a really easy way of getting fertilizer, but it's not. So I wonder if I dump it on the ground. Is that what I have to do? Let's put it somewhere where it's semi-safe. So will this allow me to pick it off, off the ground? What I maybe should have done is put it in the silo? I don't know. Can I pick it off the ground? No, I can't. Interesting. Hmm. Well, that's a problem. Well, I suppose that means we need to put an attachment onto one of these. Hmm. All right, with that disappointment, with all that stuck on the ground now, let's run up to the shop and change this, configure it so it has a hook on the front. And then we'll buy a bucket and put that stuff back into the uh, the trailer. I assume this messy can be customized like that. And so front loader will go power, I guess. Um, do we want to put more power into it? Uh, I don't think we need to upgrade, upgrade that right now. So we'll put the front thing on it, and while we're here, we will repair it though. And let's buy a front end loader. So it's gonna be under here. We'll get the how one, we'll get the bigger one, I guess. Buy. And then under that, we'll look at combinations and we'll get a bucket. So looks like, yeah, we don't need $15,000. We can just spend uh, one big thousand dollars on that. So uh, let's pick those up. And since we're here, let's also buy some fertilizer so we know that we can get out in the field and do that. So we'll just buy uh, three bags, I think. That's more than enough for this unit and yeah we'll have to work out what to do about all that fertilizer that's kind of inaccessible we may need to buy a silo for it um which is kind of cool we haven't got one of those so that's something that's doable we do have some lime bags over here the lime spreader i think is full that's why we've got them hanging around We can use this uh, spreader as a counterweight. Not that I think we need it for this small bucket. We'll uh, run over here. I wonder if you can pour from the bucket into one of these units. Uh, I don't know. It's a pity that you couldn't go from the tractor into the, or well, I should say the trailer into the unit. Right, let me uh, quickly pick this up. Out of interest, can you put this into our silo. Let's uh, find out. So we'll drive over to the silo and see if that's one of the things that it supports. If it doesn't, I think we might use this opportunity to put down a silo designed for the uh, fertilizer and the seed. 
Yeah, I'm getting no icon. So yeah, let's have a look at the construction menu, see what we can put down. It's going to be a silo. Um, I'm wondering if it's one of these custom ones. Uh, crops, 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 crops. Uh, the old, this is the iron and the stone one we have up north. We could use the no man's land one, but I think it's crops only. Uh, then there, there's these ones that I have that are custom. Seeds, fertilizer, there we go. So these two might be a good choice. So let's uh, invest in ourselves to have a dedicated one for both seeds and fertilizer. I think this spot here wasn't actually the worst spot. It's very easy to drive up to. Um, so we'll put, uh, or oh, maybe over here. Yeah, this, this, this is pretty good. So let's go there for the seeds and we'll put a fertilizer one pretty far away from it. There. So yeah, that was an unexpected turn of events. Pretty accessible. Should be able to just drive down here without too much trouble. Yeah, I like this because we can drive those triple John Deere's through here quite easily and get them refilled. So we buy the bags in the shop. We can load them up into the trailer and then uh, yeah, come around here and you, and load them up and or drop them off and then load it up. So uh, yeah, cool. Alright, as I was saying before, let's get a time lapse going. And I think I might drop off this head. I don't think I want to be driving around with it. Here is fine. And uh, let's get some tunes going. And work out where we've got to go, which I think is just straight up and down. Yep. And uh, I'll see you at the end of another time lapse. Finishing off the last stripe. I'm not sure if that sugar cane over there needs another uh, amount. Um, it says it's mulched. Okay, it does need one more layer. Oops, I <laughs> wasn't paying attention to what I was doing then. Um, how's that going? Okay, I missed some. Let's go back for it. We'll do a stripe that kind of uh, covers both the wheat here and the sugar cane. Let's have a look at that map again. Let's try that again. We'll keep straight. And so that right side will slightly go over the sugar cane. Lots and lots more fields to do. Those two in front of us, that light green one there in front of us, uh, that corner over there, which you can barely see. Uh, way over there. We should go check on our metal supplies as well. But, uh, you yeah, know, we've kind of done some of this quadrant. We'll slowly do this over the next couple of episodes. We've got a fair few months before the harvest season begins and when it's important. But uh, what's going to happen for the next couple of months? We need to obviously sell a lot of our materials. We'll do that next episode for April and then probably jump straight into May pretty fast. But I think what's going to happen is we're going to end up earning a lot of money very quickly going forward. Those renewables are going to help. And then obviously all the productions are cranking out things. Do a bit of terraforming, I think. A bit of timber work, some forestry. I'm pretty sure our wood supplies are dwindling. So that's probably a higher priority in the next couple of months. While we wait for all the crops to grow up and be ready. We have to make sure we keep an eye on the corn because we actually want to uh, harvest that or some of it at least prior to its peak when it's still green 
so that we can make silage from that because we haven't done that yet. Yeah, lots of cool things. So, as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Uh, I love talking to you guys and seeing what you think about the series. Uh, also, definitely subscribe. Uh, it's great to see the channel go up towards 1,000. And we will see you next time on the Everything Challenge as we uh, do a little bit more of just some of the fun things. We'll play around and place more placeables and just in general do stuff that you normally don't do in Farming Simulator. So that will all be next time and a couple of episodes after that. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.